All right, and I am back for another interactive tour. This time we are doing the SR28 shared use bike path. This is the Tahoe area. Um, if you've gone, if you've been to Nevada, if you've been in Northern Nevada, hopefully you've been to Lake Tahoe before because it is absolutely beautiful. And uh, we did our best to represent the beauty of Lake Tahoe in this interactive model. We did okay, I guess but you can see kind of what our lake looked like. We grabbed the terrain and this followed up after Project Neon. So it's been almost four years ago that we really got going on this project. So it's another one of our earlier ones. And to be honest, it's not one of my most proudest work. Uh, there were some cool things about it. It was, it was interesting to go from the concrete and asphalt and buildings of Las Vegas to switch it up and do this smaller, more remote uh, project in the trees and the lakes. So, uh, the client was happy and it, it did the results, but it was, it was definitely something a lot different than Project Neon. So again, we built the existing model and then we, uh, we came in with the proposed as we got that information. This one had five bridges, so it's a shared use path and this, this does exist. You can see the video that I'm sharing of this project today. I, I think it's won some sort of award or m maybe multiple awards. And it, it gives an opportunity, if you've been in the area, to go from Incline Village down to Sand Harbor. When I worked for the department, I lived somewhat in this area and we would go visit sometimes. And being from Las Vegas, just a side note, Lake Mead, I know a lot of people enjoy it. It's great for boating, but it kind of looks like a mud puddle compared to Lake Tahoe. So it's like this three mile shared use path. You can jog, you can walk, you can do your stroller and you can get down to Sand Harbor. So this was our first time with pedestrians and you can see this guy, he's kind of riding sideways for some reason. And it was really a challenge. Optimization was a challenge on this project from the very beginning. And one reason is because of all these trees, you know, you have this many trees and you're just going to run into optimization as it is, especially with the graphics cards of three or four years ago. But then also when we were trying to run pedestrians, both cyclists and uh, joggers in real time, it really, just the calculations really bogged things down. So we developed a system for kind of baking the animations. It would run the simulation and then it would um, kind of store those locations, those paths. And then you saw they disappeared because it's only like a minute and a half or something like that. And then it automatically resets. So, but it, it did the job. It showed that this path was for cyclists, runners, walkers. Uh, we didn't have many of those. I don't even remember where we got the the pedestrian assets. I think the cyclists, you know, I think I had an, I paid an art, artist to uh, make some of the cyclists and then the pedestrians we found like on the Unity store. And this is another Unity project. That's what we did all of our early projects on, even though now we do more in Unreal here in 2020. Uh, you can see some more. I, I don't know why this guy keeps going sideways, but get an idea of how it looks. We have our menu over here. It was a little different than Neon. It had a little bit uh, more aesthetically pleasing with a color palette. Pretty simple. These are the camera locations. The white, like on uh, Project Neon, the white are the still cameras. The blue are the cinematic. And so you, can, you get an idea of how this can be useful. We did it at several public meetings in, in Klein Village to kind of help the public understand what this is or what it was going to be. As I mentioned, it, it is existing today. And then we developed a lot of renders. And what I would do is I would render uh, one of these flyover paths. I'd render north and so south. And then I would render the cinematic. And because there were just some imperfect areas, I would go into, um, in post-processing, usually I use Premiere, I would go and I would cut between the areas that looked good and then when the close-up flyover would go to an area that didn't look that good, I'd cut back to the faraway area. So I know that's not a new technique in the world of editing and animation, but uh, it was useful in trying to hide some of the, the less perfect areas. But this is, it truly is a, a beautiful area. And even though, as I mentioned, it's, it's hard for me not to notice the things that aren't perfect about this model, it still was pretty cool. It was cool to do something uh, something like this interactively for sure you can see some of the bridges and I'm not sure what the frame rate is we don't have a, a stat 
thing on this one, but it's not 30. <laughs> and I'm sure when, when I was running on a, I don't know, GTX 960M or whatever at the time, it was really choppy in real time, but it did the job and most people end up seeing the, the uh, video renders that end up on the news. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure Reno, the Reno local news, which is adjacent if you haven't been in the area, they ended up showing our videos quite a bit to get people excited about this project. And it took, uh, it took I think two summers to finish. And it's interesting to do work up here because half the year it's covered in snow. And uh, I apologize for the squeaking. I, this is a garage and the wind is blowing the garage door. So you get an idea of this three mile stretch. When you're looking at a camera like this, you're not noticing the close up stuff. You're also not noticing the, um, the pedestrian animations popping in and out. So let's go to come some of these up close. This is what we call the amenities. So this is, there's this cool undercrossing. They couldn't figure out how to get people from the one side over to the other. And so they developed this loop because you can't just, the grade was too steep to just go straight under. So they did this loop to get the, the correct grade. I don't know if that's an ADA requirement or why they did that. Let's go to uh, cinematic one. All sorts of clipping when we got our cinematic cameras. We also did some photo composite renders that I'm showing right now. Those are um, those were really fun too, and they got you know just about as much play as the videos that we developed from this interactive model. This is the parking area where you can park, and then you can uh, you can go down, and you can see we we modeled some of these these buildings around here. And we did have a time of day, which is kind of cool. Always a fan of having that flexibility, giving it a different look. They also had these Vista Outlook locations. And each one was, I think it was sponsored by something that someone, that's how they paid for the project. And then we have a couple um, views from the lake. That's something that's really interesting about working on projects in the Tahoe Basin is they're really concerned about aesthetics and they're concerned about things like runoff. So, so if you've worked on a project with environmental concerns, this one has some of the strictest probably in the, the nation of the United States because it's just every little thing you do, every piece of guardrail, every rock it has to be a certain color. They will um, they'll galvanize or, or um, paint a lot of metal to make it kind of look brown and look more blended in. And then you can go here and it will kind of give us a close up of the what the path looks like. And again, we got the existing versus the proposed. This is this tree and grass, I think it's the Gaia system for Unity. That's what we use for this, which made it easier to paint and kind of do a blended model with the um, with the terrain, with the aerials, which is always kind of tricky. So we've got a cyclist that's stuck. And again, existing versus proposed. Really helpful. This, and again, we showed where those trees were up close. And so by showing existing proposed, we showed which trees, you know, these ones, for example, would be removed. And that's easier said than done. We also have this traffic system on the highway. Definitely not perfect, but it it just did the job of conveying that you know this is a this is a highway this is a state route so much smaller in scope probably about a quarter of the size both in uh, hours and budget as project neon but very effective in what it was trying to do and so anyway i'm sam lytle and this was the sr28 shared use path interactive project tour. Thanks for joining me again.